Some good news to report on nearly all fronts. Perch patterns have been working really well. This week's Buzz Bite Report. This week's snapping it off the bottom. Auto chart live. You've got fish doing a number of different things. See a lot of them? Oh, yeah! They are heavy. Look at this giant. How's that? Timely fishing strategies, hot angling tactics, and red hot bites from all around the upper Midwest. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Dave Sanda. And I'm Troy Lindner. Joining us later in the show, our regional buzz bite reporters will bring us fishing updates from all their local waters. Now in today's show, we want to talk about planning a fishing vacation. We want to show you some awesome destinations up in Canada. And when I think about fishing in Canada, there's some of the fondest memories I have on the water. It's basically like fishing in a screensaver. Yeah, to me, these are the purest forms of fishing experience where you have a chance to get away with family and friends, head up into the far north woods. You've got scenery, you've got wildlife and fish almost jumping in the boat. Now, if you want to maximize your chance of catching those fish, you want to make sure that you time your trip properly. Right now, most fish throughout the upper Midwest have either spawned or are actively in the spawning process, largely spurred by rising water temperatures. As they complete their spawning ritual, they will begin dispersing away from their shallow spawning grounds toward developing forage, cover, and living opportunities in the main body of the lake. Each species, from bass to bluegills, walleyes to pike, does this according to their own wants, needs, and basic nature. Now, consider fish behavior in more northerly waters, like in Northwest Ontario, where the water is still comparatively colder and slower to begin warming. Fish behavioral changes there begin occurring a few weeks later in spring and generally stretch out a few weeks longer than in the Midwestern states. At the opposite end of summer, fall generally comes a few weeks earlier there than you're used to back home. The upshot is, when you're planning a Canadian fishing trip, plan ahead. Don't just book your reservations months in advance to ensure that you get your desired dates and destinations. Think carefully about the species and conditions you want to be fishing, zeroing in on peak periods of fish activity. Look at that beautiful fish. Like shallow pike during the month of June. <laughs> Look at that. That is a beauty pike, man. Smallmouth snailing topwaters on July afternoons. Oh, there we go. Walleyes and muskies on mid lake reefs in August. Beautiful fish, though. Look at that. If you have a particular fishing scenario in mind, make sure you time it correctly, just like you do back home. Yeah, I can't wait to get back up there this summer. And even with the perfect timing and the best preparation going up to Canada, Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate the, the way you want her to. It can be extremely hot one day and then extremely cold the next day. Yeah, packing and planning is really key. When we just drive across the border into Northwest Ontario, we can bring all of our stuff. We can throw in all of our tackle for muskies, walleyes, crappies, bass, anything. If you go on a Canadian fly-in though, you're limited by weight. So you have to be real careful how you pack Visualize in advance how you might be fishing. I need a few of these, a few of those, a couple of those, extra pair of socks, and of course, you are going to better bring that bug spray. <laughs> Absolutely, those are great points. And right now, we want to bring you our Angling Buzz News of the Week. The annual fishing fair is coming up in Portage, Michigan. This starts at 10 a.m. on May 21st. It's happening at Ramona Park, on Long Lake. There are activities and instruction from local fishing guides and professionals. They're also giving away a lot of prizes, including rods and reels. And the best part, this event is free. Another great event happening this weekend is in Hayward, Wisconsin from Fishing Has No Boundaries. This is May 20th and 21st. They assist disabled individuals through the world of fishing. This is their 29th year doing this. You can find out more information at FHNB inc.org. It's open house weekend in South Dakota, May 20th through 22nd. What does that mean? There are no entrance fees to the state parks and no fishing license is needed. If you follow our reports online at anglingbuzz.com, then you know how good the fishing there is right now. Minnesota's state record fish program will now include catch and release length records for lake sturgeon, flathead catfish, and muscalunge. The specific applications and guidelines are available on the Minnesota DNR website. And coming up next is our highlight destination feature, Northwest Ontario, 
right after these messages. High-tech construction, building with old world craftsmanship. Pride and passion, the same qualities that define high-tech construction go into every project we build. With meticulous attention to detail, our experienced tradesmen bring your floor plan to life. Our unwavering customer service results in a truly satisfying building experience. High-tech construction, where technology meets old world craftsmanship. Running in rough water can be a pain, literally. Hey, I never knew how comfortable a ride could be. Until I added smooth moves to my boat, its four-spring design with hydraulic shock can smooth even the roughest of rides. With the built-in slide and swivel, you maintain all the function of your existing seat. A turn of the handle, adjust for conditions and passenger weight. Hey, it's easy to install and built to last. Smooth moves, your back will thank you. I know mine does. Lake Vermilion, explore, relax, reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. We're back and now it's time to grab your gear, head up north into Canada, a place where fishing, wilderness, and wildlife combine to make a great escape. This week's highlight destination is Northwest Ontario, where you can fish a different lake every day for a lifetime and never even come close to saying that you've seen everything there is to offer. Northwest Ontario boasts a vast aquatic network of lakes, rivers, and streams, collectively flowing north to the Arctic Ocean. Large waters, small backwoods gems, connecting waterways replete with rapids, riffles, and waterfalls. You want walleyes? Golden walleyes are nearly everywhere, abundant in most lakes and rivers. Fish current areas with rocky bottom in spring and atop main lake points and humps later in the season. Northern pike are nearly everywhere too and grow large in the region's cool waters. Focus on the back ends of marshy bays in spring. There you go, that's a better one. <laughs> what a beauty, huh? And shift to main lake weed beds in early summer. Got him, got him. Yeah. Nice, sweet, that was cool, huh? Feisty smallmouth bass grow big amidst the rocky shoals and islands of lakes that are within an hour's drive or so of the U.S. border. Nothing beats a topwater lure on a midsummer day for explosive action. Wow. And when you're talking trophies, the same area produces some of the largest muskies on earth. In fact, muskies often use similar areas to smallmouths. Just increase the size of your lures, put your time in, and hang on tight. Oh, oh yeah, tanker! Yeah! Lake trout are present in deep, clear, cool waters throughout the province. So are world-class brook trout, predominantly in cold river environments with significant flow. Add in fisheries for crappies, largemouth bass, and more, and you can see why Northwest Ontario is an angler's paradise. And it's all easily accessible via hundreds of drive-to, boat-in, or fly-in resorts, offering a broad range of lodging, dining, and angling options. Ah, you can nearly taste fresh fish for shore lunch this season. Yeah, it truly is an angler's paradise. I can remember fishing with my dad up there, and we're fishing some of these rock piles, catching smallmouth bass, which we love, and then we're getting in a big walleye, and all of a sudden I hook into a giant muskie, like a 20-pound muskie on a spinning rod. I'll never forget that day. I'd have to say that my most memorable trip was also with my dad many years ago. We were fishing way up north, we were fly fishing, and we both caught catch and release line class world records on pike and grayling. I'll tell you, tremendous memories off that one. Wow, wow. 
And now it's time to hear for our first round of BuzzBite reporters in the field. First up is Chad Schilling, who's catching walleyes on Lake Oahe at Mobridge, South Dakota. Water temperatures are finally starting to climb after a big cold front moved through. Yesterday we snuck out for just a little bit after the rain and we caught some good fish. Finally pitching jigs into the shallows. This is what I wait all year for. It's a bummer when it ends, but it sure is fun when it starts. And yesterday was our first day. So we, uh, we came out, we're throwing some Berkeley plastics into the shallows, just light jigs. We, uh, we caught quite a few fish yesterday. We had a couple big fish. As you're driving around, you see all the females and all the fish are laying out in that 50 feet of water, 40, 50 feet recovering from the spawn. But we're about 80% done with that now and the fish are just starting to move in to, to bite in the shallow water. So looking forward to a great summer. Our bait fish have made a great comeback. Uh, all different kinds of species, schmelt, herring, all kinds of stuff making a comeback for the bait. And uh, you know the fish look good, 17 to 19 inches with a pretty regular big one now. So it, uh, the future looks bright. We'll keep you posted with some weekly updates. Can't wait to get back after it. And up next is our youngest BuzzBite reporter, Peter Olson, up on the Missouri River in North Dakota. We're fishing the Missouri River near Washburn, North Dakota today, and we're gonna tell you the keys to catching post-spawn walleyes in May. One of our favorite baits during this time of year is a prop rig tipped with a minnow that has white in it. Our favorite colors are wild strawberry, wild bison, and wild chokecherry. Every year after the spawn, there's a transition triggered by the first big rain in May. After this transition, there's really no point in having minnows in your boat because the fish will only bite worms. Their color preference also changes from white to greens, blues, and pinks. Our favorite colors are blueberry, prairie berry, apple, and bumblebee. The fish you might be slow now, but in a few days, you'll be able to limit out with ease. And that's this week's BuzzBite Report. When we come back, more BuzzBite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Lake Winnebagashish, Big Winnie. Let's go back in time to a real up north vacation spot, a place where memories are made. Big Winnie is situated in the Chippewa National Forest and gateway to some of Minnesota's finest trophy walleye, pike, perch, untapped bass, and musky fishing. It's the perfect place for family and friends when you really want to get away. Go to lakewinnie.net to find our little piece of heaven. Hey, we're back, and you know, recently, Troy, we've had some cool weather with some rain. It often suppresses the bite a little bit for yeah. fish, at least early in the morning. Sometimes by afternoon when things warm up a little bit, the bite tends to kind of improve. And what has been missing is the warm overnight weather. When you have those warm nights, at least two nights in a row, the bite really, really gets good. We're looking forward to that. In the meantime, let's check in with Kevin McCoy over at Mille Lacs Lake in Minnesota. With the Minnesota fishing opener this weekend, Guys came up and had a great time. We caught quite a few walleyes. Uh, bass were a little spotty. Uh, Northerns are open also. <clears throat> the walleyes are on the perimeter of the lake. Uh, the north end of Mille Lacs is mainly sand, and that's definitely where the biggest uh, numbers of fish were taken this weekend. Uh, look for that to continue the next couple weeks. Uh, the south end in the evenings are definitely gonna be a, a great place. Uh, plan on going just a little bit deeper than normal. That water's pretty clear right now. Uh, that I'd say that 12 to 25 feet is definitely the best place on the south end for the for the bobber bite. The, uh, the smallmouth just getting ready to get on, get on their beds, so looking forward to a great great season. Come on up, and we'll see you soon. Up next is panfish expert Brian Brosdahl on Lake Winnebagashish. Brian Brosdahl here, fishing spring crappies, in northern Minnesota, on a bay of Lake Winnebagash. The water temperatures. In the high 50s. 
there is a real fish right there. And the, it was actually up in the 60s, we got cold fronts coming through, which dropped them off the bank. They were right up in a foot of water, two feet of water. Now they're falling down, throwing small firefly jigs with a little crappie minnow and a little three quarter inch light bite bobber from Northland. I also use a moderate action panfish series uh, from St. Croix, just so I don't rip their lips. Look at that slab. That's my biggest of the day. That's a true jumbo crappie. But check it out, they're, they're in about six to eight feet of water and they're looking for green weeds. We're gonna let that big one go. What a beauty. Our next reporter, Billy Rosner, up on Lake Vermilion in Minnesota. He's talking walleye and pike. The crappies are in and they're doing their thing. They're really starting to go into soft bottom bays and that will just start progressing through the other bays th throughout the lake. Remember, if you really get into some of those big crappies, throw those back and keep some of the smaller ones for dinner. They're, you know, it's a precious resource. Walleye fishing, jigs minnows, jigs plastics. And a tip here, you know, if you get enough dinner you're happy with for your, your uh, fish fry, and you wanna focus on a big fish, what I like to do is I'll take a four or five inch chub, nose hook it on a number two or four hook, you know, three, four foot leader, a bead on there, and just pull that along 0.6 to 0.8, and uh, chances are you'll hook into one of those big Lake Vermilion walleyes. So that, that's a lot of fun. If you're gonna try a little northern pike fishing, I would probably do it in the afternoon after you're done walleye fishing. You can long line troll with some of your Rapalas, your originals. Uh, you know, two and a half, three miles an hour, you should get bit. You can cast, I like the loud colors on Vermilion. Cast some blue foxes, that should put some pike in the boat. Travel safe and we'll talk to you next time. In fact, later in the show, Billy Rosner will be back to show us a boneless pike filleting technique. Pretty handy thing to have. Right now, we're going to check in with Jeff Evans up at Shawamigan Bay, Wisconsin, where he's on the smallmouth bass. As you can see, we uh, have a really good early season pre-spawn smallmouth bite going. I'm going to put that one back. The water has warmed up into the, even in the high 50s, even low 60s right now in some of these backwater areas on Chewamagan Bay. Um, and the bite is, is really getting going. We're using suspending jerk baits like this Rapala Shadow Wrap Shad. And I'm using a snap snap pause presentation. That seems to be what's triggering, triggering those strikes. Most fish are coming on that pause. Sometimes you get really got to let it sit there for quite a long time to trigger that reaction. But the fish are moving in and they're on the bite and it's really happening. So get up here on the bay and get after these smallies. Our final report comes from Captain Ben Wolf over in Michigan. Hi, I'm Captain Ben Wolf with Sportfish Michigan. And I've got this week's report for you for the state of Michigan. The Detroit River still has plenty of great walleye fishing in it, including some big fish that have moved up onto the shallow flats to spawn. Those are also are targeting deep water, are catching plenty of walleye as well. And we have dropbacks heading back down to Lake Erie. White bass are in thick, and anglers can use just about any technique they want to target these feisty and fun fish. Grand Traverse Bay is a dynamite lake trout fishery. Trolling and vertical jigging are the preferred methods there. Some suspended ciscos that are up in the column about 40 feet down, those are starting to bite really, really well. Big schools of cisco, and they're all running really large this year. For fly anglers, brown trout fishing has been good. Big streamers stripped against the current looking like a wounded bait fish has been the ticket. For more information, or if you're looking for a captain or guide in the state of Michigan, please give Sportfish Michigan a call or check us out on the web, sportfishmichigan.com. As you can see, there's a lot of great fishing opportunities across the upper Midwest here in Minnesota. We had our official fishing opener. I know you were just out east a little bit far from here. Yeah, I was at the Minnesota Governor's opener over at Big Sandy Lake near McGregor. And uh, folks, you know, it was, it was a little bit cool, I admit it, but well, we caught some walleyes out there. Everybody had a good time. It was a great opener. Yeah, I was on Mille Lacs Lake. I could have used a little bit warmer weather. Those fish are really, I think, going to set up for a really good year out there if, uh, if this weekend was a little bit of sample of what's to come. Right after this, cool products followed by our technique of the week.
Do yoga. Do sunrise. Do locally sourced. Made from scratch. Do golf. Do foot golf. Mini golf. Do soar. Do jet. Do cycle. Paddle. Beach comb. Do chill. Do vineyard. Craft beer. Do toast. Do another toast. Do hike. Climb. Do wow. Do flip. Do smile, do laugh, do fall in love, or maybe next year. Do it all again tomorrow. Lake Malax, do the lake. This is my son, and I'm doing everything I can to raise him to be a good man, to teach him the value of working hard and doing things the right way. We come to Fleet Farm, just as I did with my dad, to explore, to learn, to laugh. Mills Fleet Farm is more than just a store. It's an adventure, it's a memory. It's my store. It's our store. Mills Fleet Farm, serving generations since 1955. Sport Fish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sport Fish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. And right now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. These products are going to be great for your fishing vacation this summer. And I will start right here with these awesome bags by Plano. They teamed up with Mills Fleet Farm. These do come in a variety of sizes. Some bigger ones, some smaller ones depending on what you're going after and, and how you want to pack. And inside your Plano tackle box and you can have these species specific a lot of times I'll have like a musky box right here I'll have you know some of my bigger baits in here I can put some crankbaits I love swim bait fishing so I'm always going to have swim baits in these and I can categorize them for either baits or different different uh, styles types of fish it's really nice you keep everything organized keep everything tightly packed and then a smaller box like this for like pan fishing, trout, even some bass gear if I'm going hiking or if I'm going up uh, on a little shore fishing session right here. This is perfect. This is a lot smaller. This will fit in a backpack. And for your boat, we have the Atwood Trailer Jack Wheel Stop. These come in a few different sizes right here. This just, it's pretty, it's pretty easy, right? You just put it down, crank the front wheel right into this. The wheel actually never touches the ground. It'll also keep your boat from moving so you don't have to bring an extra set of like wheel chocks. You can just put this down, crank your boat, it'll stay in place. And when you're on the water fishing or boating, this is the Onyx AM24 life jacket. This is US Coast Guard approved type three jacket. It has a nice, as you can see, a nice low profile design. I like wearing these out on the water because when I'm fishing I do a lot of reaction bait fishing. I'm moving around the boat and some of these bulkier life vests can kind of get in the way and they kind of hurt your neck or shoulders. And if you do become submerged in the water there is a nice safety feature in here. It will automatically inflate. You can also manually inflate it by pulling this cord. This is the Onyx AM24 life jacket. And after you caught your fish, you're ready to fillet them. The Pro Fillet Board by Rapala. This is made with high density polyethylene. What does that mean? It's high density plastic. It's FDA and USDA approved. This is approved food grade plastic. And it also, let me flip it over. You see these grooves in the back? This is for your fillet. So you just put it right on your bucket like this. You put your fish there, you put the fish remains inside the bucket. Everything stays clean. Really, really sweet. You can pick all this up at your local Fleet Farm store. You can also get it online at fleetfarm.com. And here's our final product from Excel Outdoors, the horizontal cargo trunk. It's really nice. It's a great transition point from your truck to your boat for things that you might not want to keep in your vehicle. You know, maybe boat cleaner, little cases of oil, your boat trout if it's wet, you definitely don't want to keep it in your truck. You can snap it closed just like this, and then you have a lock right here. This thing also doubles as a step right here and here. Easy way to get in and out of your boat if you don't want to use your wheel well. 
Well, right now it's time for our technique of the week. We're going up to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. He's going to show you an easy way to make boneless pike fillets. I'm going to flay out a northern pike the way I was taught uh, many years ago. It's a three-step method. You know, the northern pike, they kind of get a bad rap because nobody wants to deal with those Y bones. But once you learn this technique, it, it's really simple. And they're, they're really a great eating fish. First step is you want to get this pike nice and flat like this. Come down with your first cut. You'll kind of feel that backbone right there. And just kind of glide it right down along the top. Using the tip, come up right back there by the dorsal, kind of flip it off of there. And it just exposes this so nice. You got the backbone, and here's your Y bones right here. So then I'm going to just take my tip, I'm going to start up here and start this first cut on this first side. And I run it down, lift it up. Like anything, it might take you a little, little practice, but after you do a few, you'll get the hang of it. And I like to trim everything up nice, just kind of come up like this. And there's your side. And then the tail, that's all boneless. Then you want to take the skin off, of course. This is the back here. Oh, it's almost like a piece of cartilage. And what you want to do here is if you can follow me, like a little V cut. Come in on both sides. And it's simple as that. You have six boneless fillets ready for the frying pan. Hey, thank you, Billy. That's a great tip. I'm all with what Billy has to say. Everybody talks about walleyes, but northern pike from a cold, clear Canadian lake, really good eating, especially with a little fried potatoes, veggies, little fruit on the side. You know what? I can hardly wait. Hey, that's about it for today's show. I'm Dave Sanda. And I'm Troy Lindner. And if you haven't had a chance to stop by your local Mills Fleet Farm store, Please enter our sweepstakes for a chance to fish with us in the beautiful Brainerd Lakes area. And also check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Angling Buzz. Next week, we're going to be back talking primetime panfish. And in the meantime, be sure to check us out on the web at anglingbuzz.com. See what our buzz bite reporters in the field have to say. And as I always like to say, they're going to help you put more and bigger fish in the boat in the weeks ahead. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Charlie Moore. Frank Rolston. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay to Lake Sakakoya. Lake Superior. Madison, Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week.